the Kiltec P17. Let's check it out. Keltec goes to the beat of a different drum. Uh, their designs are unique in the firearm industry, and there are a lot of advantages. Uh, sometimes they just look different. Uh, one of the things about the P17 is that it's a 22 semi-automatic pistol, but 99% of it's polymer, which makes it super light. And it has a 16 round magazine capacity, and then you add the plus one, which gives it the P17. Uh, this is a very different kite pistol, but the big thing is the price comes in at retail of less than $199. And of course, market price, you can get it for less, but this is a super lightweight gun. In fact, it only weighs 14 ounces fully loaded, which makes it excellent for hiking, backpacking, just carrying in the field, great for pest control. And the one thing about 22 is it's low report, inexpensive to shoot, and it's just got no recoil and it's great for first time shooters and yet 22 is so versatile with so many different type ammo choices that it just makes for something that you really should have a good 22 pistol in your collection now i purchased the Keltec p17 from palmetto state armory and i was able to do that because of our patreon family and we really appreciate our patreon members uh, that really allow us to bring really different cool designs to you guys all right, guys, we have the Keltec P17. Uh, this is a 22 long rifle semi-automatic pistol, mainly polymer. Uh, one of the most polymer <laughs> rich guns that I've seen. Uh, now this holds 16 plus one. And so the P17 actually includes the round in the chamber, but that's a really nice mag capacity for 22 long rifle. And if you'll notice even here, the rims kind of set it off just a touch. So 22 long rifle has, you know, it's been difficult to get more than 10 rounds. And that's the traditional load is 10 rounds. Uh, we saw the Taurus TX-22 that came in, 16 rounds, and we've seen others following along. And so this is getting into more of a higher round capacity. Now we're going to go ahead and make sure that the gun is unloaded. We're going to get rid of this ammunition. And uh, right here you have your double paddles. So I can hit it with my trigger finger. Uh, it's a polymer magazine. Again, this does hold 16 rounds. And then we bring back the slide and the gun's empty. And one of the first things you'll notice is this slide. The metal is only on top of the frame. Uh, in fact, this is a polymer housing as well. So when I say this gun is really 90% uh, polymer, uh, it's getting pretty close. Of course, we do have the steel barrel. Uh, it is a 3.8 inch barrel. Uh, and so you can see it right here and we're going to look at it because it is threaded. Uh, we also have two additional mags. Now one of the things about this handgun right up front is that it is a budget 22 pistol. And most budget handguns typically come with one magazine. Uh, this one you get three magazines right up front. We have some slight beveling where the magazine goes in. Fits in really nice. Fairly tight. Uh, you do have the a standard Keltec type cubed texturing um, and it comes around it's actually a smooth back strap and front strap but actually it fits really well in your hand uh, it's very thin but it's fairly thick this way uh, and it is a very compact size and again it's a very lightweight handgun 
It does have ambidextrous controls. We have our frame safety here, and of course it is on the other side. Uh, we also, of course, have our mag release. And again, guys, this is the paddle mag release. Some guys love it, some guys hate it. I personally like it. Uh, I like it because I can take my trigger finger, drop the magazine, and insert a fresh one. Uh, but, you know, we're used to sh having that mag release here on the side, and a lot of companies that offered handguns, which Walther and HK did, they went to an option with that standard mag release. Uh, we do have a three-slot Picatinny rail, squared off trigger guard, uh, curved trigger, and we have our takedown pins right here, and of course they are on the other side as well, and we'll look at that when we break the pistol down. Here at the bottom, you can see a little bit of a lip. One of the things that kel does on a lot of their guns is they take the frames and they're a two-piece frame. And so each of these have screws. Now, I typically don't have any problems with the frame staying together. I've, with all the kel that I've had and shot, but sometimes, especially like with the safety, I have had a safety on a PMR-30 that actually came off. I didn't even realize it uh, until later because it was an ambidextrous frame safety. Uh, but you want to be careful that these are in place and Loctite works really well with that. The sights are definitely different. Uh, you know, in fact, this actually moves back and forth. There's a spring in here and there's a spring side to side. And so you adjust your sights with this little place and right here with this screw. And so this will give you windage and elevation. Uh, and then also there are two screws here that hold into the metal of the slide. And again, this is just a polymer piece. Uh, the serrations are decent, they're wide. It's a very light rack for the slide. Uh, and then we have our slide release, which is very small. Uh, and so it's definitely, you know, just a little bit different. Of course, a lot of people, when they load a fresh magazine in, you can pull back on the slide and it just drives it home. And a lot of people do not use the slide release. This one is so minimal uh, that you're not going to use it that much. The barrel is 3.8 inches in length. Uh, it is threaded. Let's bring it back and take a look at it. Uh, we have a thread protector. It is half by 28 threads. Uh, it does come with a wrench to be able to get this off. And it does come also with the adapter. And so that's going to be suppressor ready right out of the box. Uh, one thing though, it is not optics ready. Now you see these two screws, uh, which would lead you to believe maybe it is. But they actually offer a whole separate slide assembly with a red dot already attached. Um, and it's fairly expensive, but it does have the red dot attached. So if you want to go with a red dot, uh, that is going to be the option. Nice curve here at the back. It gives you a fairly high ride, even though it has a fairly decent higher bore axis. Now you will notice this little red dot. Now this is your cocked striker indicator. So when I pull the trigger, it disappears. That doesn't mean the gun is loaded, it just means that the striker is in the cocked position. A very smooth top. Of course your sights are attached with that fiber optic front rod. Uh, very easy to see. It contrasts well with the rear sight, which is uh, serrated. Serial number plate is actually back here below where the web of your hand fits. Uh, so the metal parts inside, but they can't really put it on the polymer, so it does require a plate. But you can see that the slide itself is rounded off. It's almost like sheet metal. So when it comes back, that whole surface comes back, but it fits down into the frame. A very unusual um, setup. Now here is the kel PMR-30. Uh, this is a 22 Magnum semi-automatic pistol. Uh, you have a heel type mag release, brings it out, and then, of course, a, very similar to the P17 where you have this housing right here that's the rear of the slide. A little bit different in styling, uh, but you do have those cubed shapes here, uh, a lot of polymer, and then you see that you have your slide, uh, which is fairly minimal. And this is a very lightweight gun. And I'll tell you what, guys, in 22 Magnum, I love this handgun. Uh, but one of the things that happened with this one was on the other side, I did lose the frame safety. And I found it, but I didn't find the screw. kel was really fast in getting one back to me. So this a lot is a lot of fun. Uh, but yet, with the P17, it's even less recoil. Now, the Taurus TX-22 is honestly very closely related. It's a bigger pistol. Uh, it is a 
16 rounds plus the gun is empty but you can see it has a totally different slide system which is aluminum and a small little port on the side uh, these are great little guns Taurus has done a great job with the TX 22 series uh, and they have some competition models there's a lot of cool features it's very ergonomic in your hand but also the Glock model 44 uh, but this is limited to a 10 round magazine and so which has been traditional uh, but the weight seems to be really close to the Taurus and the kel -Tec. but yet the kel comes in at the lightest weight. So with the kel P17, 12.79 ounces. Taurus TX22, 17.49 ounces. And then the Glock Model 44, 14.98 ounces. So while these are very light firearms, uh, the kel P17 comes in at a much lighter weight. Uh, to the point you could have this fully loaded and it's still lighter. But the one big thing about the Keltec is the price. Uh, it retails for $199, uh, while the Taurus retails for $349.99 and the Glock $499. Of course, market price is going to be a lot cheaper, uh, but we did pick up the Keltec again from Palmetto State Armory for $179. Uh, so a very reasonable option. And that's really one of the big appeals of the P17. Now we're going to check the trigger pull weight, uh, but I'm going to use some dummy rounds. Uh, rim fire is not the best to dry fire uh, because it hits the edge of the rim. And so we're just going to try it and we're going to check out the trigger pull. All right, with the trigger pull, uh, we have some take up and then it has a little bit of a wall. Uh, then we're going to go through the wall and then it's just a nice little break. Um, it's not very crisp, but it definitely you feel the break. We're going to check reset right about there. Not very tactile, uh, but definitely it's audible, but not a bad little trigger. We have a Feather River Sports trigger pull gauge, and this is from Brownells. Okay, that's about three and a half pounds. Again, about three and a half pounds. Now, it states in the manual that you're to use high-velocity ammunition. That's going to give the gun more reliability. Uh, if you use standard-velocity ammunition, you could have some issues. And, you know, it's stated. And plus, a lot of the semi-automatics that I have, they just function better with the more high-velocity ammunition. Just gives it a little bit more power to, to rack the slide, to enter the round into the chamber. But you also don't necessarily want to use hyper-velocity ammunition. That could be a little bit overkill. Uh, and two, it just puts more wear on your gun. So choose good high velocity ammunition. Now we're going to go ahead and test doing some standard velocity ammunition to see what kind of results we get because it just gives you more choices. Now we're using a couple of different kinds of ammo. Uh, we have some Fiocchi and this is their high velocity copper wash bullets. These are just excellent rounds. Uh, we're also going to try out some of the standard velocity, uh, but this is not recommended. So we're just going to see what it'll do also from Fiocchi. We have some CCI mini mags that we're also going to check out uh, just to give us a little bit of variation. But we really appreciate Fiocchi for sponsoring the ammo. Uh, they make it really easy and all made in the USA. One of the biggest suppliers of ammunition in the country. These magazines just load just from the top. And guys, one thing about it is, especially with a budget firearms, to have three magazines is really unheard of. So that really counts toward the price of the gun. A lot of times you'll only get one magazine with a budget gun. It's really easy to load these rounds, especially at first. Uh, up to about 15 rounds, it goes in really easily. The last couple of rounds, a little bit tougher, but not a big deal. All right, guys, out here at the range, kel P17. We've been shooting quite a few rounds. I've shot about 400 rounds through it so far. Uh, even shot some of the standard velocity 22, and it functioned well. But, you know, they recommend the high velocity, which we're doing the Fiocchi. Polymer magazines holding 16 rounds for 22. That's great. Uh, we're seeing more of that. Very easy to rack. Super lightweight handgun. Nice external safety, just gets it right in there in that natural place. 
no recoil. And we have that green fiber optic sight so you're able to really see your target well. Slides held back every time. Uh, we were shooting 40 grain uh, standard velocity, which they don't recommend, but it functioned it well. Uh, but I would definitely stick with the higher velocity ammunition, just a little cleaner to shoot. Uh, but there's just no recoil in a super light gun. Very handy. Standard velocity, 40 grain, Fiocchi. Uh, we're just going to try it out. It calls for high velocity. We've already shot some. It's functioned well. We're just going to do a little mag dump. So far, this gun has been 100% reliable, and that's with over now 600 rounds of ammunition. All right, for disassembly, very simple. Drop our magazine, check the chamber, it's empty. Uh, go ahead and bring the gun back into slide lock. And next, we're going to want to take these little tabs on either side, similar to a Glock, and just pull down. Bring your slide up, off the rails, and then forward. And it just comes right off. Uh, then you can release. Uh, actually, kel says that this is all that you need to do to field strip the firearm. Uh, because of the slide, <laughs> I mean, that is unusual, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but again, most of the mass here is just steel up here, and then we have that rear polymer section. But you can see the steel goes completely through, and it has this whole block right here. So you have metal on metal contact. Uh, with the barrel, uh, you can see the recoil spring and guide rod. It's right here. Um, these do carry a lifetime warranty on them, but if you disassemble them past this, you can void the warranty. Uh, and you want to keep your hammer in the rear position so you do not pull the trigger uh, before you disassemble. And actually, you're supposed to put it on safe, and I just need to include that, but obviously you see that it will break down without that. Uh, this will probably come off with that wrench, but again, we're not going to take that off. And guys, really, that is what you do to field strip, and really, when you clean it, you clean it through the chamber. Um, and so that way you preserve your accuracy. But overall... Um, hammer fired internal so you can see that internal hammer fired and the hammer is in the rear position if it goes forward you need to make sure that it's back now for reassembly uh, we're just going to pull down our tabs bring the slide over the barrel just like you put it to uh, take it apart bring it down lower it right onto the slide rails and now you're back in business that is very simple Okay, again, the manufacturer suggested retail is $199, which makes this very reasonable. Market price definitely is less. Again, I paid $179 from Palmetto State Armory. And with some of the more comparable options, this is the most reasonable in price, and it's the lightest. And it holds 16 rounds, 16 rounds, and only 10 rounds with the Glock. But I will say that all three of these handguns have served me very well. They're just excellent but the price is really right on the kel -Tec. So pros and cons. Of course, price is definitely one of the big pros. Uh, the lightweight, big pro. It is threaded for a suppressor and you have your adapter that's included with your wrench and all the fun stuff. Uh, the uh, sights, rear sight is adjustable. Uh, it's a little different, but it works and the accuracy is really good. Uh, as far as for us, again, zero malfunctions, even using standard velocity ammunition, which is not necessarily recommended. High velocity ammunition is recommended. But I find that a lot of times, once I fire a few rounds of uh, high velocity ammunition through a 22 long rifle, a lot of times it starts to kind of forgive and then you're able to shoot a more of a variety. But if you want to make sure, use standard velocity. Uh, the paddle mag release, I love it. Uh, there's a lot of guys that don't. So that's a pro and a con. Uh, you do have ambidextrous frame safety uh, on either side. Uh, for me, I shoot so much without a frame safety, uh, and that could be a pro or a con. A lot of people like the frame safeties, and I understand that it gives them a little bit of extra uh, safety feature. And then we have our Picatinny rail, uh, great for light and lasers. Uh, it's not optics ready, 
which is a little bit of a ding and you can get the optics ready slide, but um, I think they're $150. So it's almost the same price of the gun, but you do get the red dot sight. Trigger, it's not bad. I like the trigger. Uh, it's not much of a wall, but it just really shoots very well. The trigger seems to be fine. There have been some issues with the safeties coming loose. I would recommend, if that's a problem, put a little bit of Loctite on there and you'll be good to go. Super easy to disassemble. <laughs> I mean, super easy. Uh, grip, not very textured, but you're just shooting 22 and it seems to be adequate. Uh, there's no recoil and it just makes this a great gun for first time shooters or those who just want to go out and shoot some rounds. Three magazines, that's a big plus. And guys, a lot of times, like we talked about with a budget friendly handgun, you may get one magazine and this has three. I didn't check the price on these, but I'm sure that they're fairly inexpensive. We have a fiber optic front sight, which makes it nice. And again, we've already talked about having the adjustable rear. Very simple, easy to pull back on the slide, very light, easy. Um, just overall, uh, I've been impressed with this handgun. And while it does have that kill tech look to it, uh, it is getting more towards some of your just standard firearms. I mean, obviously, you've got a little bit of a thicker piece back here uh, where the serrations are. Uh, but otherwise, it's got a nice look to it. So it's kind of a weird, nice look. Uh, but guys, I've gotten to where I love kill uh, just because they're just different and they're a lot of fun. And, you know, they just kind of, again, go outside of the box. So overall, we've had a very pleasant experience. There have been those that have had not some great experience. Those may have been some of the earlier versions, uh, but it, it does have a lifetime warranty. And it's made in the USA. So guys, if you're looking for a super lightweight handgun, again, 14 ounces fully loaded. Uh, it weighs just over 12 and a half ounces empty. Makes a great backpacking gun, hiking, camping, you know, great outdoors. Uh, but then again, it's just a great little 22 plinker. And the price is right, coming in at under $200. And again, we wanna thank our Patreon family for their support. And again, bringing some really cool stuff to review for you guys to check out. Plus, for me to check out. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. But you just want to make sure that you're, you're you keep up with all that, yeah, and all that, and all that, and all that, and all that. I just feel like I'm like, Bleh. now here we have the old tried. Okay. Now here we have the. Okay, okay. Now here's the. Okay, okay. Keltec is known for its unusual designs. <laughs> Additional mags. That is. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, but one of the big things about the Keltec. Okay, crap! I can't even get the stupid thing like that. It holds 16 plus one equals 17. Uh, this is a, okay, that sounds kind of goof wide, goof. They're fairly inexpensive. They also have these dogs that are just barking like idiots. And a lot of that is purposeful. A lot of it is just the way that they think. And it's just really weird sometimes.